Hi, I'm Roger McGullis, Research Director at O'Reilly, and I'm here in beautiful California wine country with Doug Cutting, and for those who know Tom White's Hadoop book, this is The Shed in the Backyard. And we're here just to talk about uh, what Doug's interests are right now, what's going on, the Cladera O'Reilly uh, relationship, and so forth. At, at Strata plus Hadoop World, I do the demographic analysis, and we know that half the people there are business people who are, you know, how you use data and so forth, and a lot of people are practitioners and data scientists and data engineers and stuff. But how would you explain what Hadoop is to people who aren't that technically savvy? At its simplest level, um, uh, Hadoop is, a, is some software that lets you strap together a bunch of really cheap computers and make them look like one giant computer. Uh, so you get the, the economy of, uh, of the processing and storage on, on cheap computers. You can, you can buy phenomenal amounts of hard drives and processors at, at Fry's um, uh, and put them all together and make it look like a giant computer that can, can hold giant amounts of data and do phenomenal amounts of processing. Uh, so that's, a, that's the, the sort of basic level. Um, the next sort of uh, more refined analysis uh, or description uh, of Hadoop um, uh, is that it's an operating system uh, for uh, data that is distributed, that runs across a bunch of computers. So you know, what an operating system provides um, is storage. It provides uh, the ability to share resources, uh, so security um, uh, and scheduling. Uh, and, and so that's how it really gives you this layer, uh, which is, is very analogous to what, what Linux or Windows do for single machines, uh, but instead to a network of tens hundreds or thousands of machines. So you've been working on Hadoop a long time. You've seen lots of projects, uh, but I mean projects from outside the company uh, uses. What, what's kind of your favorite application of the data and outcome? Boy, people always ask me what my yeah. favorite <laughs> Hadoop application is. Or even just a favorite. <laughs> no, no, it's, good. Or the it's a good question. <laughs> I, never have, I never satisfy with my answers. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just amazed at the, the variety of different things I've seen. Um, uh, one fun one, um, uh, was my mother passed away uh, about five years ago. Um, and after a year or so of mourning, uh, my dad started saying, okay, I need to, to find a new partner. Um, and he started using these online dating services. And both of the services he used, use Hadoop on the back end uh, to, to help uh, you know, match people. And uh, I thought that was pretty fun, that something I worked on was actually helping him uh, uh, find a new partner. And he's, he's now remarried happily, and uh, so it's, it's pretty neat. I was, I was able to help that. So that's, that's a neat personal one. Right. Um, uh, another one that was um, uh, really touching, I, was, I visited the um, uh, Atlanta Children's Hospital. Um, I think it's properly Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. Um, uh, and they've done a, a really neat thing. This guy, Todd Davis there, um, uh, just started gathering data um, that was otherwise being discarded. Um, in particular, uh, stuff from the neonatal ICU. Um, so these are little babies who can't make it on their own, uh, mostly preemies. Um, and they've got all these probes hooked up to them. Uh, they're being monitored. And he just started sticking all that stuff in a Hadoop cluster. Uh, and then the, he didn't have a, you know, a, a huge, at least initially, um, uh, sophisticated agenda of what he was going to study with it, but they started just doing some queries um, that the nurses um, uh, were interested in. They started looking at uh, how stressful, for example, um, various ways of taking blood samples um, uh, from the babies were, uh, to the babies, how long it took their vitals to return to normal, uh, and they learned that they were pretty stressful and that there were ways that they could do them that were less stressful. And stress is not a good thing when you've got a, you know, a baby that's barely hanging on anyway. Um, uh, so it's pretty neat. I mean, they just, they just you know, started uh, harvesting some data that they, they were throwing away um, and found some value in it, um, uh, it just with some simple counting. Um, uh, so that, I love that sort of, uh, you know, sort of grassroots. Um, uh, uh, the other thing that I, I find really fun are the, um, uh, I think it's the, the little boy who, who liked Tonka trucks in me, uh, uh, that we've got uh, railways and uh, heavy equipment manufacturers and tractor companies um, who are gathering all kinds of data. They've got these you know, sensors all over the equipment. Uh, and you know, in the past, you might have a sensor that you just monitor for when it exceeds some value. Um, and otherwise, you're discarding all the values. And now they can, uh, they can record things historically, and they can predict failures. 
Um, uh, they, can, they can predict when a piece of machinery is, is going to need service um, before it needs that service. Um, and, uh, and, th and that's neat because, you know, wh who'd have thunk uh, that, that we'd see, uh, again, this very high tech, big data stuff um, being used out on, on work sites. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and it is. Yeah, I love the first two stories have that great human element too. Right. I mean, it's really helping people get along in different stages early and later, yeah. later in, yeah. their, in their lives. Uh, those are great stories. Um, what do you think is holding the industry back? You know, what kind of things are going on that there's clearly a lot of adoption, there's a lot of excitement, but there's also, there's other issues around. What, what do you feel from your place? There's, there's technical things and there's cultural things um, uh, that are sort of uh, gating the, the rate of adoption. Um, technically, um, uh, there's still a lot of need for, for polish, um, for, for you know, glue, uh, smoothing the transitions between components. Um, we've got a really different environment um, where you can have a wide range of tools um, that you, you apply to your data um, and you can explore it. Um, uh, but that also brings up a new range of problems. Um, how do you, um, uh, you've got different user bases accessing the data that, that didn't have access to it before. Um, how do you monitor that? How do you control that? Um, uh, and then how do you make it all uh, run smoothly between these different components and these different organizations? Um, and for those things, um, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of technical work we can do. Um, uh, to build the security frameworks, um, uh, to build the integration tools. Um, but then there's the, these cultural issues. Um, you've got people um, who've spent the bulk of their careers investing in particular skills, um, and they know how to solve problems with the tool sets that they've, they've solved them with before. Um, and now we've got a whole new set of tools, um, and they're resistant uh, to that change. And, and, you know, I understand that. I mean, I've been programming for uh, whatever, 25, uh, 30 years, and I've used the same text editor for all those years. <laughs> and, and I don't want to change <laughs> editors. And, and, you know, and I, it's, it's hard to change tools. Right. Um, and, uh, and so these are a, a big change in tools. So um, you know, some of this can be addressed through training, but it's also just time. Um, uh, you know, there's, uh, you know, another element of that is, is um, simply that uh, organizations don't turn over their technology that frequently. You, you build a system, it works, it's solving a problem, um, you don't replace it every year. Um, uh, and so that, that takes time for this, um, the need for a system to really get to the point where it's no longer functioning well, where the business has moved far enough from it um, uh, that you need to replace it uh, with something new. And that's happening, we're seeing this turnover, so it's, it's this combination of technological advancements, um, uh, cultural change within the organizations, and also the, the uh, turnover. Uh, mm -hmm. of technology within the organizations. Yeah. What about things that are like around privacy and, and the kind of the impact of data on society? Um, uh, you know, I, I read a lot of science fiction novels and watch a lot of science fiction movies, and uh, in nearly all of them, the guys that collect the data are the, the bad guys. Uh, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm sort of tired of that. It's depressing to me in part. I mean, I, I love the, the, the stories, um, uh, but I, I hope we can change that. Uh, that we can uh, make it so that there's enough true stories out there um, about uh, great things done with, uh, with, with collections of data um, uh, that, that, that people start to see that the, you know, the good guys are, are collecting data. Maybe they both are. Um, and, I, and you don't want to whitewash it. You don't want to just you know, try to promote the, the few good cases. You want there to be lots of good cases. Um, and I think there are some. I mean, what I was talking about earlier with uh, yeah, those are great uh, children's stories. healthcare yeah. uh, uh, is, is a great example. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously we need to work as a society to prevent the, the, the harmful cases mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and to regulate um, uh, and, and be, be confident that um, we're not going to see more abuse. Mm -hmm. um, uh, institutions need to be trusted um, uh, before we give them our data. And I think we, we aren't doing a great job of that. Um, uh, there is a lot of mistrust. Um, uh, there's a lot of people sort of doing the, the, the moral equivalent of the tinfoil hat um, uh, with their data. And, uh, and that, that also saddens me. I mean, if, if somebody's uh, going to, you know, want, get, let people, uh, if somebody, somebody wants people to give them their data, um, then they should want to be trusted um, and, and should work hard to, to earn that trust. And I think, I think institutions are starting to get that. Uh, I'm optimistic um, uh, that they'll, they'll uh, have the right transparencies um, uh, that will institute the right sorts of uh, regula regulations and uh, audits um, uh, so that people can, can be comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, uh.
Great. So what's got you most excited about the future in this space? You know, it's, it's all exciting. I mean, it, we're, we're, we're at, a, at a tremendous sea change in how technologies use. Uh, um, I mean, data, uh, you know, used to be a plural, right, of, of datum. You know, you'd have nine data uh, and uh, <laughs> one datum, nine data. But uh, now it's really become a mass noun. And I think that kind of symbolizes um, uh, what we're seeing in, in big data. We're no longer um, uh, building temples out of rocks, you know, sort of Stonehenge style, um, but rather we're um, uh, thinking about, uh, you know, the water and the soil where, that, we're, that we're, we're farming in, in, in mass. Um, and uh, so uh, it's just, it's, it's neat to see, to be a part of this revolution and see it unfolding. Uh, you know, at, at Cloudera we see um, the number of customers doubling year after year, that like, can't continue forever, um, but also the size of the installation uh, at customers doubling year over year. Um, uh, it's a huge sea change. Um, uh, and, uh, and it's happening across just about every industry. Um, and I think we're gonna, we're gonna really see a lot of, lot of upside from it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I completely agree. So we've got Strata plus Hadoop World coming up. Uh, we're actually gonna be on stage together for uh, announcing some of the people. Um, anything you're looking forward to this part of the program? Uh, I, I'm looking forward to the, the whole conference. I, I'm really excited about the partnership between uh, uh, Cloudera and O'Reilly. Um, uh, O'Reilly, I think, has a, a really wonderful brand um, in, in the, the um, technology community um, as this um, uh, independent voice um, uh, that's also promoted open source, um, it's promoted you know, uh, ethical computing, um, uh, and it can be um, an ob objective um, uh, editorial voice um, uh, for the conference. Um, we don't want it to be just a, a you know a pro cloud era trade show. Um, uh, we really want it to be a place um, where folks can come together. I mean, we've got a community around the open source projects, um, uh, but having the, the broader community of users and vendors and uh, uh, all come together is really important. Um, and that we can do that more at more places um, and with uh, O'Reilly's editorial voice um, is really exciting. Uh, the community needs that um, uh, to, to, to grow in, in a healthy way. Yeah, that's great to hear. Just There's been an announcement recently that now it's Strata plus Hadoop World worldwide. We've got California and Europe and stuff. And as you're now a chair, uh, so you get to help with some of the direction. What are the kind of topics you're going to, you want to focus on for the uh, conference? Um, I'm very interested in uh, the, the ethical uses of data in, um, in as I mentioned earlier, um, uh, giving people confidence uh, that their data is going to be used in ways that they approve. Um, and, and I think we, we need to build the, the standards for that. Uh, so I'm interested in, in tracks that discuss that. Um, I'm also just interested in uh, having folks who are building these applications um, tell us what they're doing, uh, give us their war stories about what went well, what, what didn't go well, uh, and, um, uh, and so that we can all uh, learn, learn from those mm -hmm. uh, and, and help to figure out what we ought to do next. Right, that's great. So you've actually given the answer to this next question away a few times. H-A-D-O-O-P. <laughs> <laughs> How should it be pronounced? And we actually so, have the original right here. So when my son was um, uh, probably oh, I don't know, uh, two or three. Um, uh, he had this guy, he was given it by a friend, um, uh, and uh, he was running around the house, playing with it, you know, shoving it in things, throwing it around, uh, as, as a little boy will do. And we overheard him calling it this, this kind of strange name, Hadoop. Um, and uh, I was, you know, in the software business, um, somebody who thinks about naming, uh, coming up with good names, uh, and, you know, my, my idea of a good name is something that's meaningless, and I was like, that would be a great name. And it, and it comes with a mascot, right? <laughs> uh, which, which is, you know, another Perfect. hard part, coming up with, with some sort of uh, thing. So uh, I, I immediately said, we, we should save this. And so I wrote it down on a piece of paper. Um, and I had my wife write it down. And we compared and we both spelled it H-A-D-O-O-P. So I figured, that's good. Other people will see it and they'll, they'll say that's the way it's, it should be pronounced. And of course, immediately everyone starts saying Hadoop. Uh, and uh, which, you know, I, I, it's not something I can change. It's, you know, tomato, tomato, uh, uh, whatever. Um, uh, and not something that I get, I get too excited about. I, I talked to uh, my friend uh, Jeff Nunberg. Uh, he's, he's actually I, one I, of my... I know Jeff, yeah. yeah. he was a professor of mine in, in college. Uh, so, so, so we go back. Uh, and about what I could have done. 
Um, and he said the right thing to have done would have been to spell it with two Ds. Um, and I think that would look terrible. So I'm, I'm glad I didn't do that. Uh, well, I'm so glad you picked a word that's easy to disambiguate <laughs> yes. and find. So regardless of pronunciation, but I am going to try really hard at strata plus had a world. <laughs> you know, I don't. don't I, 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 see, I see people try and, and it just makes it clumsy. Say, say what comes out and it's not something that bugs me at all. I, I think, it, I mean, I think it's just well, a little unfortunate. Cool <laughs> <laughs> so, so Doug, this has been great. I mean, I think for anyone who's interested in the space, it's great to hear from the person who was there at the beginning and the kind of learnings and uh, what you found from what's being applied and so forth. So really appreciate your time. Oh, my uh, pleasure. Thanks for coming out to the, the shed in the yeah. yard and, uh, and visiting me. Uh, and I'm looking forward to um, uh, all the Stradoop, uh, Strata Hadoop worlds to come. Uh, <laughs> great. Stradoop. Great. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. great. Well, thanks a lot. Oh, my pleasure.